guys, it's Angel. Welcome back to my Tesla Model 3. Baby Dragon and I are going to be talking about the latest software update that we recently got from Tesla, which is V9. Now, V9 has some really, really cool features, including the Navigate on Autopilot feature. So I'm gonna be talking about seven of the best features or seven of the best features that I think are the best features in the latest software update. So if you're interested in seeing what those are, keep watching. All right, so the first feature that I think is really, really cool and I went to go try out immediately after I got the software update was Dash Cam. So how Dash Cam works is you have your USB stick and this is the one that I got. I'll post a link in the video description if you guys are interested. Now, some of you may need to format your USB stick. This one in particular, I did not need to format it. All you need to do is create a folder called Tesla Cam and you're good to go. You basically take this USB stick, plug it in in the front underneath the area where the cell phone is. There's two USB ports there. Then on the on-screen dash, you will see a camera come up with a red dot. Now the red dot means that it's recording. If you wanna stop the recording, you just press and hold for three seconds. And then same if you wanna start recording again, press and hold for three seconds. Now dash cam only records for the last hour, so it'll actually overwrite footage so if you do want something that you wanna save, maybe you're driving a really cool road, or you see an accident or you got into an accident, what you should do is save the last 10 minutes. You just press the camera icon and it'll automatically save a copy to your USB. So that's dash cam, it's a super cool feature. You don't have to buy your own dash cam and install it, it's already here in the car. The only thing is that I hope that in the future, Tesla will activate the rear camera and the side camera so we'll get more footage, more complete footage if we ever get into an accident or we ever need it. Oh, and I should mention that dash cam is available on all Tesla vehicles with hardware 2.5. Okay, so the second feature that I think is super cool is the ability to send addresses and places that you want to go directly to your car. So let's say for example, you are at home and you want to go to the mall. What you can do is, is on your phone, you can look up the mall that you want to go to, type it in, select that, then hit share. And you'll have to set it up this first time, but once you set it up, you can share to your Tesla. So I'm just gonna share to my Tesla, and it says sent, share to Baby Dragon. Drive south on Lake Washington Boulevard Northeast for 1.5 miles. So the address will then show up on the navigation screen and it'll automatically start navigating to that location. Now, you don't have to be in your car to do this. I am right here in my car now, but you could be at home, you could be at work, or you could be at a coffee shop and you could just type it in and it'll automatically share to your car. Same thing with Yelp as well. I'm a big foodie, so I always like to look up new places online on Yelp. And through the Yelp app, you can actually just search for whatever restaurant that you wanna to go to and click on that share button. So I'm just gonna share that to my Tesla. And it says sent, share to Baby Dragon. So that is such a cool feature. It's great for trip planning and it's just a super convenient feature that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use all the time. So yay for trip planning. Cool feature number three are updated climate controls. So the climate control screen looks totally different. I think it's modernized. It looks really sleek. Before, if you wanted to make it warmer or colder, you actually had to press individually, like go up 70, 71, 72. Um, and that was kind of annoying, but now they have a slider bar, slide up or slide down. So it makes it really easy to change your temperature. Also, this new interface for the airflow looks really sleek and modern. You can just touch with your finger and direct the airflow either up or down. And it actually works. I am super picky about where I like my airflow, so this is nice. In addition, if you use heated seats a lot, you can now turn all the heated seats off with one touch. And I know we're just talking about climate control here, but the climate control screen is actually very sleek. And while we're on this screen right here, the next feature I think is really cool is the updated apps for browsing. And for that, you click on the little arrow, up arrow here. So now with this new button, they've kind of grouped together all the apps. 
So there's calendar energy, web camera charging, and call. Now the new one here is energy. So that shows you energy consumption in real time, or if you're on a trip, it shows you trip consumption. So that's super helpful. And I know they had this on the Model S and X, but it's nice that they brought it to the Model 3. Also, the one app that I think is pretty cool to have added is the web app. So you can actually surf the web from your car. And it's not the fastest web browser. It's not gonna beat my iPhone, but it's actually a web browser that functions pretty well. And it's pretty decently fast. So I can go to my YouTube channel. As you can see, it kind of loads up pretty fast. There's also the Tesla website. Now I know it's not a life-changing feature to add, but to have web browser instead of staring at your phone and surfing is kind of cool. So the web browsing and the energy tracker are just two nice features in the V9 update. The next feature is the ability to update your car's software from your phone. So prior to this, I would get a notification on my phone saying you have a software update available, but then I would have to go down to my car and push the icon for the update. And even though it's not a big deal, it's nice to be able to do the updates remotely from your phone. A lot of times I got my updates at night. And so, you know, I would go down in my pajama, say, hey, baby dragon, how are you doing? Let's get you your software update. So you'll see in the app, you can go in and you'll say software update is available, push that, and then it'll ask you if you want to complete the update or if you want to cancel it. Another consideration is that software updates do take about 30 to 45 minutes based on experience. So it's kind of nice to be able to do it from the comfort of your home without having to walk over to your car. The next feature, which is super, super cool, is autopilot. Now, when I say autopilot, I mean V9's version of autopilot plus 360 view. So what that means is that all eight cameras on the Model 3 are now activated, which enables a more complete view of what's going on around you. And you can see that on the dash where there is more visualization of the surrounding vehicles. And I know it kind of looks like a video game almost where your car is in the center, there's Baby Dragon, and there's cars that approach you from the side, and then also in the front, you can actually visualize and see them there. And this allows for better blind spot monitoring, which was previously done with ultrasonic sensors, but now they also use the side and rear facing cameras as well on screen to help you. Oh, and another thing that I think is really cool is that when you're on the highway and you want to change lanes, you'll notice that when a vehicle is detected in your blind spot, the lane line shown on the on-screen visualization turns red. So when you see the red, it means it is not clear to go and that is a no-go, do not change lanes. The one thing that I would say is that it would be nice if the red was a little bit more obvious. Right now it's a red line, but it would be nice if maybe there was more red or some beeping noise to kind of help alert you that there is a car in your blind spot. But other than that, the 360 view is really cool because they've also added more, I guess, I wanna say animated characters. Um, but there's now trucks and motorcycles. And even when I've come to a red light and I'm in the front, I can now see pedestrians walk across. The next autopilot feature that I'm gonna talk about is Navigate on Autopilot. Navigate on Autopilot is per Tesla an active guidance feature that with driver supervision, note that with driver supervision, so you have to be paying attention, guides the car from the highways on ramp to off ramp, including suggesting lane changes, navigating highway interchanges, and taking exits. Now you probably wonder how this all works in real life, so I'm just gonna show you a demo clip of Navigate on Autopilot. So I took this trip in semi-rush hour. I entered in my address, and once you have your address in there, a Navigate on Autopilot will show up in a grayed out screen. If you wanna activate that feature, just press it. The button will turn blue, and that means you're on Navigate on Autopilot. And when you're on your way to your destination and you're getting on the on-ramp, the Autopilot icon will show as available. So when that shows as available, go ahead and activate Autopilot like you normally would by pulling down on the stock. And once you get onto the highway ramp, the car is on Autopilot and it will tell you to merge. So it'll show you on screen to go left if you need to merge left 
and all you have to do is just confirm by pulling down on the stock. Now, when I tried this the first time, there was a ton of traffic and it ended up not changing lanes for me. So I ended up taking over, but on my way to my destination, I re-engaged autopilot and I was behind a slow moving car. So at that point, it suggested that I go around that car. I basically pulled on the stock to confirm the lane change. And then the car waited till I was in the clear before initiating the change. I also did end up trying navigate on autopilot in different areas. And I noticed a couple things. One is that it didn't work in tunnels. As I was approaching the tunnel, I got this notification that basically said in 500 feet, navigate on autopilot will disengage. And then it went 400 feet, 300 feet, 100 feet. And at that point, the car kept driving, but it went into regular autopilot instead of navigate on autopilot. And then when I got out of the tunnel, it went back on navigate on autopilot. So that's kind of an interesting tidbit. Also, when you're getting out to your destination at that last exit, the car will automatically start to exit and it'll again do that thing where it says navigate on autopilot will disengage in 500 feet, 300 feet, and then it goes into autopilot. And at that point, I'm prepared to take over altogether by holding onto the steering wheel and disengaging autopilot by pulling up on the stock. Oh, and one more thing to note is that the first time that I took Navigate on autopilot for a try, I got sick because I had put the car in what's called Mad Max mode, which doesn't mean like it's dangerous. It just means it's more aggressive in driving around slow cars. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, Mad Max mode. I don't recommend it at this point. I'm sure it'll get a lot better in the future, but it did make me kind of sick, probably because I'm susceptible to motion sickness. But if you do want to change that mode, you just go into autopilot. And here under navigate on autopilot says speed based lane changes. You can go mild, average, or Mad Max. Don't put it on Mad Max. It's kind of scary. And that brings us to the last fun feature in the latest software update, which are the Atari games. So when you're in parked mode, of course, just go to your Tesla dash, click Atari. And there are a few different games here. There's Asteroids, Lunar Lander, Missile Command, and Centipede. All like old arcade games. And they're kind of fun to play. So you can play them either on screen or you can play them in full screen mode. And if you wanna play them on full screen mode, just press full screen. Then you can use the wheel controls on your steering wheel to actually play the game itself. And I know these are just arcade games and there are tons of cool games I could play on my phone, but this is actually a really fun feature in your car and it comes with the full game background music so you can get the full effect from your car's speakers. So that's kind of cool. So that's the arcade games. Definitely not as cool of a feature as dash cam or navigate on autopilot, but it's something fun in there to have. I'm Angel, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of Tesla's V9 software update, along with Baby Dragon again. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The link is right here or somewhere here. And for those of you who have a Model 3, I'm curious to know what's your favorite feature in V9 software update. Post in the comments and let me know and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.